process of order. Uh, yeah. Yes. Can you comment on the uh, panhandlers? Yes, I will. We have just um, introduced and implemented a panhandling ordinance in Citrus Heights. It's one of those issues um, that's gotten increasingly severe with the downturn in the economy as more people are panhandling. Some of them are homeless. Most of them are probably homeless. But some of them are not, actually. Some of some people panhandle for a living, <laughs> and it's you know all underground money. Some people make forty to fifty thousand dollars a year as panhandling. Um, so we we have had increasing uh, requests from our citizens to do something about this. The difficulty with panhandling, it is considered a protected right under the First Amendment of expression. So we can't outlaw. I said, it's like a lot. It's like a lot of other things that I have a hard time um, understanding. Panhandling is considered a right under the First Amendment freedom of expression. So a, a, a municipality, a city, or a county cannot outlaw panhandling without inviting a lawsuit from the ACLU and a whole bunch of other legal legals, and you know having it and losing in court because the interpretation has been that you know agree or not, the panhandling is a right. But you are, but pan, invasive panhandling is not a right. So we have instituted an ordinance in Citrus Heights that is pretty. I think pretty well addresses the situation and makes panhandling very difficult. Um, the way ordinances go is you have a first reading and at the next council meeting you have a second reading and then it goes into law 30 days later. So the law will actually hit the books the 1st of September, which is very, very soon, tomorrow. like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's exactly the first, but it's within the first week or two of September. And our ordinance there, it's, has multiple facets. Of, you cannot panhandle within 200 feet of an intersection of a, of a driveway off of a main thoroughfare. And, and the reason, the way we're able to do this is, is citing public safety of not only the panhandler, but the person that's being panhandled. You can't do it from a median, any median section at all, because of safety. Uh, you can't do it anywhere on the premises of a gas station. And the reason for that is because a person can't leave. You can't, you're, you are bound there pumping gas or until you can get in your car and drive away. So nowhere on the property of a gas station and not within 35 feet of an ATM or the entrance of a financial institution, bank, or credit union. That, that was only 25 feet and I'm out for you out of 10 because I actually was accosted by a panhandler at my ATM about a year and a half ago. And, in, you know, I, I'm a pretty brave person. I don't have any problem telling him to buzz off, but it's still a hard thing to, to experience. So our panhandling ordinance is going into effect in September. There are some other parts of it too that I can't remember all the different ones, but I think it is broad enough that it's going to uh, dramatically minimize panhandling. And what it does is give our police department a tool because it will be a misdemeanor. Um, I will tell you too that our police department is very proactive in working with the homeless, the transients, and the, the folks that live in that world. They don't just bust them and send them downtown, so they get released and come back and do it all over again. We, they carry information with them and they, they encourage people to get into services and to get, and so we try to act as a, as a conduit to, to provide other alternatives to people that are homeless and panhandling. 95% of them live that way by choice. And you ask any police officer and they'll tell you that. 95% of the people that are out there panhandling or living off the streets have chosen that lifestyle. It may have been, apparently been out of need initially, but they've chosen to stay there rather than to offer some of the services and get them back into the working world and into a, a permanent home. So um, it's, a ch it's gonna be an ongoing challenge, but we're doing our best, yes ma'am. Um, could you explain something about the sign ordinance about when realtors put up their open house signs? Well, realtors are entitled to put signs up um, uh, under our sign ordinance. Um, I, I have to look up the exact wording on it, but um, you are entitled to do that. Um, you can't block the right of way, so it can't be on a sidewalk or in the, in the entrance. 
close to a driveway, and they have to be temporary. They can't be there unless it's on private property, you know, advertising that particular property. Now, they, they are allowed to be like on a median strip? They, they are not allowed to be on, they're not allowed to be on the median strip because of safety. Okay. Visual impairment. Oh, thank you. I went through and looked at it, and if anybody hasn't seen it, I encourage you to take a tour. There's volunteers there that will show you through the whole facility. It is just phenomenal, the green um, initiatives that they've incorporated in the building, permeable asphalt outside, LED lighting, motion sensors. But so much thought has gone into that building. It's so versatile from the movable walls and all the things it can be used for and has a senior center. It's just really awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it, and you know, it is a jewel to us. The ceiling, which interestingly enough, is is all made of re, re, uh, recycled bamboo, and it's gorgeous. A lot of natural lighting. Every room has an outside lighting source as well as skylights. It is also very affordable. I'm at, my my living is to run nonprofit associations, and then so I have a couple of them that right now that I'm running, and so I do events. You know. And um, I've booked some events there. I've moved, of course, for me it's wonderful, but the associations are much broader than just citrus heights. But I've moved them from other facilities uh, once it opened because not only is it state-of-the-art and, and has great amenities, but it's also very affordable. It has dual, it has two complete kitchens, back-to-back -back mirror -mirror kitchen. So thank you for that. I know, I'm way over. So sorry. <laughs> and before that, I know, um, through the Chamber of Commerce and so forth, and has really given a great deal to the city. Um, and as we all know, um, you know, being involved in politics within a city like Citrus Heights is not a lucrative type of thing. It's done out of love. So um, 